from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Um, everybody knows that uh, we have a writer strike in the television business. And, uh, of course, those of us who live right here in Hollywood, we're very aware of it. Because we see the pickets and we uh, read all the stories in the local paper here about uh, the people going to lose jobs. First, the people who work on the shows. Then the people who uh, cater the shows. And then the people who like do dry cleaning for TV shows, it's going to extend out into the Southern California economy. It could cost uh, the Southern California economy $10 billion. Now, the reality is, if you don't live right here in Hollywood, the writer's strike really hasn't had an effect on you. Why? Well, because TV shows are generally filmed at least six weeks in advance of your seeing. And so, until recently... Uh, Nothing has looked askew, right? All the new episodes are coming on. Normally after November sweeps month, as you get towards Christmas, they start running reruns, as the networks are doing. And so the writer's strike really, um, unless you watch Jay Leno, David Letterman, Stephen Colbert, or um, what's the other one? John Stewart. Really hasn't had an effect on you. By the way... In addition, uh, the later talk shows, Conan O'Brien and Craig Ferguson, they've been off the air. And Carson Daly, Mr. Roboto, um, he was off the air, but guess what? He's gone back to work. That's right. They're bringing the Carson Daly show back because, hell, if that show has writers, I'd be blown away anyway. Have you seen that program? Holy cow. Does anybody watch that show at 1.30 a.m.? Does anybody watch that program? Carson went back to work. I mean, anybody who writes that show should be arrested, charged with grand theft. If somebody's getting paid to write a monologue for, uh, for Carson Daly, you have got to be kidding me. Holy crap, Batman. That's unbelievable. So, um... Those are the shows where you would notice a difference, but really, uh, if your favorite show is, uh, I don't know, CSI, or your favorite show is Two and a Half Men, or your favorite show is The Office, or any of a number of other primetime shows, those shows had episodes produced already. And also, a number of popular network shows now are reality shows, and because they claim to be reality they say they don't use writers. And, of course, we all know the truth about reality shows, and I've talked about this on the air before, that reality shows are fake. One of the reality shows we speculated about on the air is the one on VH1 called Scott Bayo is 45 and Single. Now, Scott's a listener. I have met Scott. I met him at the Foundation Room with the House of Blues once, as a matter of fact. I know he's a listener. And he was a cool guy to hang out with. And uh, I got nothing against Scott. You know, he did a reality show, because let's face it, he's not appearing in any sitcoms these days. And so uh, it's a gig, and we're in Hollywood, and, you know, it's a gig. Nobody would criticize him for taking an opportunity. But I speculated a long time ago that the show was fake. 
uh, like most reality shows, it was fake. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you watch the show at all, Scott Bayo uh, talks on the show about having been uh, a guy who effed around Hollywood with uh, some of the hottest chicks in Hollywood and was continuing banging his way through town. And on the show, he uh, he uh, admits he has a problem, and they hire him a dating coach or a life coach or something like that. And that person is, like, trying to, uh, you know, coach him into a leading a more normal lifestyle, I guess is the premise here. And now they've begun the second season, filming the second season of Scott Bayo is 45 and single. Well... Now we find out how fake this show is. Second season is just, uh, just being filmed. Scott Bayo is 45 and single. And this uh, story, uh, this is from People Magazine, uh, says Scott Bayo is 46 and married. Says here the former Happy Days star and legendary bachelor finally tied the knot with longtime girlfriend Renee Sloan. In a rooftop ceremony at a luxury high rise Saturday in Los Angeles. Now, wait a minute. I thought the guy is single. Uh, I guess by single, they mean not married, but the guy had a longtime girlfriend. If you watch the show, you're under the impression the guy can't stop banging everything in creation. And he pleads for help. But now we find out he's had a longtime girlfriend named Renee Sloan. It says here that the small religious ceremony was filmed for an episode for the second season of Scott Bayo is 45 and single, which premieres next month. Are they going to change the name? Among the attendees, Sloan's 18-year-old daughter by a previous relationship. And, according to sources, the newest member of the Bayo family, the couple's newborn daughter, whose name has not yet been released. Now, wait a minute. You mean all this time he was on this show, going back and visiting people he banged in the past and getting life coaching or whatever he was getting, he had a girlfriend and he was getting her pregnant and she was having a baby during all this time. While he was on TV making himself look like this pathetic single guy who can't stop screwing around. I mean, how much more proof do you need that these shows are phony, phony, phony is a $3 bill, phony, fake? You know, with this writer's strike, you're going to be seeing lots and lots more reality shows. And that's why I brought up the strike earlier, because that's what's going to happen now. NBC, I read this in the Los Angeles Times over the weekend, NBC has has a game plan for business here. They're going to have as few reruns as possible. They have got so many game shows and reality shows planned to go in January. They're just going to take all the shows that are on strike and take them off the air, and they're going to put just tons of game shows and reality shows on, so they've got new programming all the time. That's what they're going to do. And, of course, you're seeing what kind of reality you get on reality shows. Says here, Bayo and Sloan, a model and actress he dated in the late 90s. After meeting at the Playboy Mansion, stayed friends and reconnected romantically a couple of years ago. Now, let me ask you a question. If this is really a reality show, should Scott Bayo have been doing a show called Scott Bayo is 45 and single? When unbeknownst to you and the public, he was secretly impregnating his longtime girlfriend? Seriously. Doesn't this tell you how fake these shows are? What do you think? Dumb, dumb. 
like us. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. I just have a problem with you calling women dumb bitches. I don't see where you get off. Well, I only do it when they are dumb bitches. Yeah, but it's just such a derogatory term. You cannot find any other words in your vocabulary just to express how you feel. Oh, yeah. Dumb whores, uh, stupid broads. There's plenty of words in my vocabulary. You're not even uh, I'm a, Why are you on I'm, the radio? This is I'm over the hill slots. I mean, I'm, I'm like a thesaurus. I got plenty of words. It's the Dumb Like It Show. It's the Tom Likish Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Yeah, Scott Bale is 45 a single. That was the name of the show. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Michelle on the Tom Likish Show. Hi, it's Michelle. I just said that. <laughs> so, do you have the facts of the Scott Bale thing wrong? What facts are wrong? So the whole point of the show was that he had been dating this girl for a number of years, and he couldn't figure out why he wouldn't want to commit. So they brought in a life coach to figure out whether he wanted to propose. So at the end, there's a big party, and he decides he's going to propose, and then she tells him she's pregnant. Right. Now, do you really believe that that all happened on camera? Oh, no, I don't believe that the whole show was, you know, reality, of course. I, I mean, I know they said he had a girlfriend. I know that. But she was in the show. I mean, that, that's not the point. The point is, come on, this, this guy knew he was getting married. And frankly, my opinion, uh, he also knew that she was getting pregnant. Yeah, well, he actually hit on me, like, probably when he was dating her about a, a year before that. So I agree with what you're saying. He was all over the place. I'm just saying that I don't believe reality shows are real for one second. Yeah, I agree with you. Not one second. And now that we're about to be flooded with them, it's important for people to keep in mind these shows are as scripted and as fictional as any fictional TV show. Right, and you have to question anyone who'd want to go on one anyway. The Scott Bayo show is about as real as the Jerry Seinfeld sitcom, okay? Except his friend Johnny Vinokur, who's on the show, he's pretty real. That's his real personality. How do you know? Do you know him? I've met them. They both hit on me. In a- uh, and even if it's his real personality, does that mean that he wrote every word he said? It was all stuff that just came out of his head? Well, if you saw that guy, he's so obnoxious that you can't write that stuff. He's, like, really that obnoxious. Don't be so sure that you can't write that stuff. <laughs> I write obnoxious jokes all the time. Yeah, no, you're probably right. Most of you- them I tell myself. Some of them I slip to other people. Yeah, but if you got a taste of this guy, he's it was pretty. What I'm saying is, the, his his character or his personality on the show was pretty close to what he is in real life. Pretty obnoxious. But I, it doesn't matter if somebody's personality is similar. Reality shows imply that they have some of a documentary style that the cameras follow people around, and the reality is what they put on. Whatever happens, happens. Right, I agree with you. I'm not. It's not true. It. I just wanted to give you some of the backstory on the Scott Bayo thing. Well, I, I, I understand. I'm, I'm glad you called in with that. It doesn't change what I said. You can't tell me Scott Bayo didn't know he was getting married or that he didn't know his girlfriend was pregnant or getting pregnant. Ridiculous. How convenient that he found out on the last episode. One eight hundred five eight hundred. tom is our telephone number. Lexi on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. <laughs> well, I'm a listener, and I totally agree with you on everything, but I was on a Spanish reality show called Buscando Amor, and I got paid $100, and they changed my name to Tiffany, and I had to go like to golf and stuff in Downey, and they paid for our dinner, and they pretty much scripted everything. Did you find love, dear? No, the guy was short, fat, and a wetback. A wetback? He came from Mexico illegally, and he said he was trying to make it big in Hollywood, and these people were going to help him. I see. (laughs) I don't think I've ever heard a Hispanic person refer to somebody else as a (laughs) wetback. Well, he told me he came illegally, so that's what I call him. (laughs) Wow. Well, I'm Mexican, so I can say it. It's okay. Well, I'm... 
That's why we let you say it, but... Uh, <laughs> Okay. Yes, I've seen some of those shows, uh, and uh, the worst ones are on that channel uh, here in L.A., that channel 62. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the one I was on. <laughs> yeah, the worst. Yeah, because one of my friends, um, she was working um, as a casting, and she called me last minute because the girl bailed, and she's like, you want to make $100, you don't have to do anything, they're just going to tell you what to say, and you just kind of go along with it. Right. Well, uh, by the way, that version of uh, Cheaters that they, I don't know if they're still producing it. You know that version uh, that version of cheaters they have on Channel sixty two here in L A. I mean, yeah. how fake how fake can it get? I don't speak Spanish, but I understand it, and that show looks about as fake as fake can be. Yeah, they're pretty horrible. They wanted, I guess, the whole point of their shows is they have to get you in a jacuzzi at the end. Right. But I said no, so they got mad at me because I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I was like, you're going to have to pay me more than $100 to get in a bikini and jump in a hot tub with this guy. <laughs> oh, but how much would I have to pay you to get into a hot tub, dear? <laughs> um, I don't know. You're Tom Likas. It's different. That's my point. <laughs> nah, you're cool. I uh, like you. You're funny. Good. I got two hot tubs, dear. <laughs> well, I don't know. My boyfriend might get mad. <laughs> well, who's going to tell him? If you don't, I won't. What goes on the road stays on the road. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh huh. Okay, now you got me laughing. I hear you blushing. That's what I hear. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lexi. Thank you. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Now you know. As I always say, you know how it works. In talk radio, anybody can call in and say anything about anyone. And they're anonymous. They could be making it up. I mean, somebody could call in and pretend to be somebody else, pretend they know somebody. They could be pretending that something happened and it didn't. So we always recommend that you take a caller with a grain of salt. We put the calls on the air. And we let you be the judge, but with that understanding that what the next person is about to say could be a complete lie. You be the judge. Tad on the Tom Likas show, hello. Wow, all that dramatic buildup. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, somebody I was, I'm very close to worked on that show, and uh, everything is uh, scripted. Uh, everybody you see on camera, they're all paid extras. Uh, yeah, everything's everything's fake. It's all uh, there's nothing real. Yes, and many of the so-called average everyday people you see in the background of these shows are, in most cases, out of work actors who are members of SAG or AFTRA. Or just, yeah, just professional extras. People that just all they do is background work. They go from one to the next to the next and get paid like seventy-five bucks a day. Right. To go stand around in the background. I also work in the business, so I'm very familiar with the process. Right. Well, I think people should know this because, you know, we're about to have 50 reality shows on the air, and um, yeah, I, I think people brutal. should know what they're getting. Yeah, it's yeah, they're they're all completely scripted, completely fake. I mean, they knew where they're going to be on that show six weeks from from when they got there because it's all you know, it's all big setup. It was all it's big all planned plan. out. Yeah, all yep. big plan. Mm-hmm. Well, stop calling them reality shows. These are just fiction. The, the only reason they call them reality shows is so they don't have to hire uh, union writers to, to write the shows. Yeah, and, you know, because... It, it cuts the cost of making the show. And, and, they, and they don't have to make them seem like they're any good either. I mean, you know, they, well, because the excuse is, well, it's a reality show, you know, whatever happens, that's we put the show. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's all just crap and... Uh, Hopefully people will get sick of it soon and wise up. And more crap is coming. Oh, yeah, it's going to be bad. NBC's got a lot of crap warming up in the bullpen. Yeah, Fox as well. Wowee. Now, that same disclaimer, I told you that people call up here and they can be somebody or they might not be the person they say they are. They might know what they're talking about. They might not. They might be simply lying. That's possible with anybody who calls in. So you be the judge. Rona on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. Wonderful. Just wanted to make one more comment really quickly. 
Um, I had a reality show shot at my house. I had a crew living with me for one month. It wasn't a reality show about me. It was an actual real family that came in. I can't say the name, can't say the network. But I just wanted to let everybody know it was all BS, all scripted. Everything was fake. So I'm agreeing with you 100%. I've been involved in the business for a while now. I've been a site rep for many of these shows, and I mean, you wouldn't believe what is scripted. What restaurant, everything, everything is completely scripted. Really? Yes. So, is there anything real in a reality show besides the names of the people? <laughs> and some of those are probably fake, one. too. Huh? Even that was changed for this one. Really? Yes, it was. Wow. Yes. But just wanted to make that comment. About to get cut off right now. I'm driving. But thank you so much. Your show's great. Thank you, Rona. Appreciate the call. Donnie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tomas. How you doing? Good, sir. Wait. One of the best for me is that Family Jewels, Gene Simmons show. Yeah. I saw it, what was it, last year when they went camping, and they had to be like Big Bear. And in the same day, there was a rattlesnake in his motorhome. Then there was a bear in the tent when he went fishing. And the idiots that believe that this stuff is happening, the people at work all talk about it and believe it. It just kills me. That's the part that amazes me. How many people say, what a jerk this person is, what a bitch that person was. or You know, it's like, come on. These are actors following a script. Yeah, well, and a bear in the tent. It's like Yogi showed up at his damn picnic site. <laughs> it's in Big Bear. But that's all I wanted to say, Tom. Merry Christmas and... Happy Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and all that good stuff. Donnie, the same to you. Thank you so much. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Boy, oh boy, they just keep coming. You never know if these callers are telling the truth or not. You be the judge. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Long hey. time, first time. Thank you. Uh, about, like, last month, uh, I'm not sure if I could say this band's name, but they're a huge band, and... um. Their bass player was doing a book signing, and I asked him about their singer's reality show that came, is about to come out, I guess, and he said that was completely scripted, and now, now they're just not even talking because he just hates that he sold out because of that. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, this just goes along, but I mean, everyone just sells out for these stupid reality shows. Well, again, I think what happens here when you say they sell out, uh, many of the so-called celebrities on these shows are really former celebrities who can't find any work. True, but I, I'm not sure. This guy's like a rock star that's made millions. Well, I'm not saying that, but I don't know who the guy is. All I'm saying is that uh, some of these people were celebrities in the past. They made millions in the past. And today they don't have the same demand for their services. That's generally why they do these shows. True. All right, Tom, it's been an honor talking to you. I agree with you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone. Now, Dean gave me the name of the person he typed it up on the screen. I think he would qualify as one of those people. <laughs> In fact, he's qualified as one of those people for many years. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jeremy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Jeremy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Hey, yeah, just calling in that G the Gene Simmons Show. Like that guy was saying a couple calls ago about the bear and the snake being in the tent in the motorhome. That's not going to happen in one day. And the fire guy coming, putting out the fire. It's all scripted. And the... Uh, in your yeah, opinion, you you don't have any inside information. No. In my opinion, I think it's all scripted. You know, the Brett Michaels show where he falls in love with one blonde in the first season, and then now they're already filming the second season where he's going to fall in love with another blonde. They're just scripted, fun TV shows to watch. There's no real But they're there. as much fiction as Two and a Half Men. Yeah, exactly. They're just there for entertainment. They got some... They got some out of work writer that needs a job just writing these shows for these people. It's all about making money for them, keeping their career alive. That's all it is. But they're good they're good reality shows. Well but again, I, I, I don't even like calling them reality shows because to me a reality show should be about reality. 
that is, that is true. That is true. They're funny, funny sitcoms. That, that, that they are sitcoms. If to, yeah, if you, if you want to say that. They're, they're boarding on the line of sitcom, all scripted. But yeah. they're, they're hilarious. <laughs> so, so, you know, to, to a point. So I just wanted to call up and agree with you that, you know, reality shows aren't reality, you know. There's nothing to them. Well, that's that's what I've always believed. Dave on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, Dad. How are you? Doing great, son. Hey, me and the wife had a major fight a couple of weeks ago, and she tried getting me on Dr. Phil, but they wouldn't take us because I'm a fellow Father Tom listener. What? Uh-huh. What happened exactly? They returned the call saying that we are not material because of my views. Wait a minute. I don't understand. <laughs> well, they only want know, people to agree how, with Dr. How, Phil. How Dr. Phil is he's probably raised by a single mother and he just does not believe in your views and I stand by your views. So you named me and when you mentioned my name that ended your opportunity to be on Dr. Phil? Oh, thank God it did. Wow. How did they right. find you in the first place? You can call in and you can send them emails, and that's how they pick their contestants. So you called in? No, my wife did. Your wife called in, and oh, I so I understand now completely. I, I see your wife called in, and so when they talked to you, you mentioned that you're a student over here. Yes, sir. And then they said, "There's what again? Say that again? What they said to you? That we would not make good material because of my views. Because of your views. Uh huh." Yeah, because because your views agree with men and not with Dr. Phil and the vaginas who tune in to Dr. Phil. Exactly. That and wusses. Unbelievable. Amazing story, Dave. Tom Likas. Woof. Tom Likas. Woof. Woof. Eight. Eight. Hundred. Five. Eight. Hundred. Tom. 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 This is insanity, and you people are insane. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. I one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. And now we find out that uh, not only did Scott Bayo have a girlfriend while he was doing his show, Scott Bayo is 45 and single. But now he's married. And they've got a baby. All this was going on. Without you being told about it, that's the way. That's the way these shows work. They're fake, 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 fake. John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Good, good. I'm glad you brought up this issue. Really, really happy to know that these things are fake. I have a girlfriend. She's 28 years old, and I pretty much ever since reality TV has come on air, she's been hooked. And right now, she swears by it, by her life, that every show she watches is totally real. And the main show that I, I hate to death that she watches, and we have to TiVo it even, is that uh, I Love New York. And uh, she, she swears up and down that all those characters on there are real, the girl's real, all this stuff, and she can't miss it. If we have some engagement to go to, we have to cancel because I Love New York's coming on, and she has to watch it. And if we didn't TiVo it, we have to go home immediately. So I hope she's listening. Can you tell her all this stuff is fake? Well, wait a minute. I can't because I don't know for sure. That's my belief. But I have a caller on the line, and I always do this disclaimer, and I warn people that, you know, the guy's anonymous. Maybe he's a fake. Okay, right. But he says that he's seen this firsthand. Luis, you heard what John said. Tell him what he wants to know. Yeah, it's a pleasure talking to you, sir. Uh, I think uh, the only reality show, it's yours. I just want to make that clear. Um, I have a, uh, a, a friend of mine that, uh, you know, they, they broke into the industry by shooting, uh, you know, little small pilots and, and, and what have you. I, I didn't know what pilots meant. But what happened was that um, they landed with the uh, with a company, uh, with NBC, and also uh, I think NBC has bought uh, Spanish networks, and and I was I was uh, in front of the cameras uh, because the some of the people that that you know they, they were shooting this one idea of of 
of the uh, I mean the show. They, they were they were shooting the show, and they were short with people to come on the set. And I was asked if I wanted to be a part of it, and absolutely. I mean, I, it, every show that not only Spanish makes, but you know the the English people, uh, uh, you know NBC and all these other companies, they 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 bring these reality shows. They're all fake, and you know I've I've got to see that. So you saw it firsthand. Absolutely, and and you know what what really what really gets me mad is that uh, I used to go on the set, not on the sets, but you know you know how these uh, people get celebrity, you know you become famous or what have you. You're and and people approach these dudes, you know, friends of mine, and they think it's all real, and 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 you're looking at at these you know Latino people going. These these people gotta be kidding. I mean, they really believe that everything that's on TV it's real and it's all fake. Man, my girlfriend is one of those people. She made me get upgrade on my Direct TV package just so she can get the Fox Reality and then uh, the the new one that's coming out, Court Reality or Reality TV or something like that. And it's just ridiculous. I try to explain to her, and we get into horrific arguments over this. And I try and explain to her it's fake. And she, like I said earlier, she swears by her life that every bit that she watches on TV is totally real. And it's just, I wish she was listening so she can hear it from somebody who's been in the industry and has actually partaken in it and could tell her that it's fake. Because I, I think I would be able to actually save some money and downgrade back to the, my original uh, plan at DirecTV. <laughs> of course, most people I know who watch these shows, uh, many of them pretty much know they're fake and enjoy them anyway, or if they find out that they're fake, they watch them anyway. It's just the way it is. But we'll see how people feel about it when NBC's whole schedule is game shows and reality shows. We'll see. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Dad. Hello, Joe. Long time uh, listener. I think this is about my third call. Hey, I work for a, a private company that does a lot of the marketing for these shows uh, and whatnot. And, and the new term is they're trying to get away from this reality angle and call it alternative programming so that they can't be accused of saying, well, it's not real, it's not real. And the other uh, interest, interesting tidbit uh, to throw out there is, you know, since the writer strike has occurred, of course, all these networks are clamoring for this type of thing. And uh, how they get around it is instead of having writers, they call what, they have what they're called uh, segment producers, which are people that pretty much formulate an outline and start kind of throwing in the words and, and taking these bits and pieces of material and shooting things specifically or taking things that they shot and spinning it all together. So they're finding loopholes all around this thing to make all of this happen. Wow. That's a lot of information. Sorry about that. No, no, it's okay. That, that, I'm hoping to get that. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing that, that's become quite uh, quite frustrating. And, of course, with the shows like the I Love New York and everything else, people are savvy enough now that, you know, they're going to go on these shows and they're going to try to make themselves their own character. So, you know, they're going to act off the wall to make sure that their stuff doesn't hit the cutting room floor. So that they can, you know, leverage themselves into other things like the MySpace page that has a bazillion hits and try to market their new CD that they want to put out in five years and this, that, and the other thing. So it's become a, it's become quite an interesting little phenomenon that's occurred. And you're right, we all watch it, even myself, that works with it every day. I watch it nonstop. Amazing stuff, Joe. Thank you. Jesus. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Jeremy on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? Doing okay. Yeah, I was watching that TMZ where they uh, have the paparazzi coverage. Yes, sir. And they were they wait out front of the airport to see if they can catch stars coming in and out. And uh, one of these reality shows, The Hills, they showed up and they did a departure scene. And the girl was crying and bawling her eyes out, went inside the airport, fixed her makeup, changed their clothes, came out, and did the arrival scene 10 minutes later. <laughs> I saw that on TMZ. Yes, they did the arrival and the departure at the same time, probably to save money. Yep, yep. And uh, I wanted to say, if you make a reality show, I'll bet you that will get the best ratings out of any of them. <laughs> I'll follow you around with a camera and see what you do when you're not at the station. I'll oh, bet you, you should only know what I do when I'm not at the station. We wouldn't need a script. Hey, can you take me out writer's, uh, writer strike style? 
What would that be? Well, it's uh, a lot of white noise, a couple bangs on top of the TV, and then you blow us both up. <laughs> I don't think we can get that together fast enough. Writer strike style. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Dad, how you doing tonight? All right, sir. Hey, it's good to talk to you. Hey, you know what? I listen to your show all the time, and normally I agree with you, but this this time, Tom, I gotta disagree. About what? I understand that the shows are fake. And I don't watch them. I'm well, if you if you them. believe they're fake and I believe they're fake, how do you disagree with me? Well, this is the thing. I, you don't watch the shows, right? You just change the channel. You watch Sports Center. Oh, I don't know. I've out. seen them. I, the thing is, I don't watch them all regularly, and and most of them I don't watch very often. Uh, but I do watch each one of them just to have an idea of what they're about. Okay, well that that's that's good. You should definitely uh, you know always uh, understand the you know the other side of things, but. What, the point that I'd like to make is that there are millions of dumb, ignorant people out there, just like John's girlfriend, the uh, caller that just previously called. Uh, I'm glad that there are people out there that are that dumb and that you know that are that ignorant to watch these shows because the producers of these shows, the writers of these shows, they make lots of money off it, and if if they're able to do so, they sh they should be able to. No one said they shouldn't be able to, even though they are doing it by claiming that something is real that isn't real. Well, I mean, they're playing off, you know, people's ignorance when they when they believe that it is real. And, you know, I mean, so many millions of, you know, uh, products that are sold in infomercials play off that same sort of ignorance, and people still buy it. People still make money. I, I've that's never said people want. shouldn't be able to make money. Well, I mean, that's, well, isn't that what the writers and the producers of these shows are trying to do? Supposedly these shows don't have writers. Hmm. Well, uh, Hardy, well, har, mean, har. Oh, well, if they didn't have writers, then I mean, then it would be a le legitimate genre of shows. That no, what they have is they don't have union writers. Oh, they don't have union writers. Right. So I. So I nobody mean, gets credit for being a writer. Well, there are millions of people out there that are successful that are non-union. Again, the show doesn't have anybody getting credit for being a writer. I, I I don't see why that matters, though. Well, because there are people who are writing. So, people, there are people out there that need to make money, and I mean, I mean, I hate to play devil's advocate here, Tom, but I mean, <laughs> people people are out there to make money, and if they have to, you know, go around unions to do well, so. Well, I'm mean, making money by calling them on it. That's very that's very true. I mean, you you make a, you make millions of dollars, and so do you know producers of your show well, and all the, that. Uh, but yeah. but and we all have our own way of doing it. I don't have to come on here and lie to you. Well, I mean, is there anything? Well, is there anything wrong with people that want to do so to make money? To lie to make money? Well, there are people that, if there are dumb people that you know people people, people can do whatever they like to make money as long as you uh, agree that I have the right to go on the air and say you're a fool for believing any of this stuff. Exactly. If there so what is it we disagree? Wait, wait. So what is it we disagree about? Well, what I'm saying is that. What is it we disagree about? What I, well, what we disagree about is that what I'm saying is that if people are fool enough to believe that it is real, then they should be taken advantage of. That's it, really. Right. But what is it we disagree about? Hmm. Well. Yeah. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom KJ on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, what's happening, my brother? Not much, KJ. Hey, man, you are the lifesaver. I wish more people listen to you. You've saved a whole lot of people and a lot more need to listen to what you're saying. Exactly. But this writer strike thing is for the birds. I'm one of the people who are affected by it. I do music for TV commercials, and because there's nothing new being done, I'm now working at Macy's because of this. Oh, boy. Yeah, and it's um, the reality shows need to go, and if they're going to have TV shows, let's keep it real and stop dealing with all this fake stuff. It's making the, the reality shows are causing more problems. Than oh, I know. Believe me. The Tom Likas Show.